on the bus to South Shields. The sun's in my face. It's about an hour journey. Never been there before, looking forward to seeing it. I'm coming to the end of the high street and I think the church should be on my left. There's the old marketplace in front, I think. And then, there it is, St Hilda's Church. Let's go have a look. The church is a lot smaller than I thought it was gonna be. So what do we know about this place here? Well, we know that the name South Shields comes from the name Shield or Shield, which was a dwelling place for fishermen. The old church was demolished and rebuilt starting in 1810. They finished it in about 1881. It looks pretty locked to me. Yeah, it's not open. The parish registers here start in 1653, bishops transcripts from 1763, and this was an ancient chapelry that was created from Jarrow, so it was originally part of there, but it became its own parish in 1845. Later, from 1848 onwards, as the expansion of South Shields began, there were loads more parish churches that were built. So if you've got an ancestor who was born after that time, you need to check those parish registers. The whole area around the church is grassed over. There's not really any tombstones anywhere, but there are a couple just over there. Let's go have a look. This one is so worn away, you can't even read who it's to. But there is one over here that I can see is to Sir William someone, but can't really read the rest of that either. There's this sundial though, which is quite old. And it says here that it was erected in the year of our Lord, 1703. I've found another tombstone over in a corner next to a tree stump. It's from the 1820s and is to the rather interestingly named William Woodhave and his wife Hannah. Woodhave, what an interesting name. It's just grass and trees up this end though. No other tombstones. Nice roundabout over there and some cars. No tombstones, but I'm pretty sure under here are hundreds of people who used to live in South Shields. Of course, back in their day though, there wasn't an Asda next door to the churchyard. I've read about the excavations that took place here in the 2000s, so it'd be interesting to find out some more about those when I'm back home. And there's a stone marker hidden at the very edge here, which reads, this churchyard includes an area of about 2,800 square yards to the south of this tablet, which is used as a roadway. So that bit all along there, in front of Asda. Still no stones though, no old stones. There's lots of people waiting outside Asda for the bus though. Oh no, hang on, there's some old stones. What have we got here with these ones? Let's have a look, how old are these? And this oval engraved stone is to James Winterbottom, who was a surgeon, died in 1797. He was 56 and also Lydia and Barbara Winterbottom, who are presumably relatives. And down the bottom, someone's decorated this with some rather patriotic red and blue paint. 
there's another one next door but I can't really read the inscription very well but I know that there are some old inscriptions that were recorded of the tombstones here so I might be able to find out. There's a few more along this side of the church here and I'm going to do what I used to do when I was a kid and see if I can find the oldest one out of all of them lined up together. How old are we going to go? Older than 1797 hopefully, let's see. There they all are, let's go hunting. Looks like a 1760 to me. 1750 there I think. This old broken fragment's 1856, so much later. And I can't really read the rest, so 1750 wins. I spoke too soon because tucked in the corner here is a tombstone which is the oldest one I've found. And it says, here lies interred Thomas Matthews who died the 28th of December 1727 aged 69 and 10 of his children. Also Isabel his daughter, wife of Gerard somebody. 10 of his children. I wonder if the parish registers tell us something about him and his children. And the war memorial opposite the church. The church was built on an old chapel built by St Aidan in 647. And when the church was rebuilt in 1810, they did include the old font from 1675, which is inside, but obviously the doors are locked, so I can't go and see it today. Suspended from the ceiling, though, is a model of a lifeboat from 1802. And we are on the coast here. And lots of people who went out as mariners, fishermen, going out in their boats, never returned and their bodies were never found and lost to sea. And we'll be talking about that in another episode later. People getting off the boat, crossing the River Tyne. 